Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Hello and welcome to the course on differential geometry. Let me introduce myself. My name is Sohail Iqbal and I did my PhD from University of Warwick, UK. Before my PhD, I was a student at Qaidism University, Islamabad. I did my MPhil and MSc from there. And in my MPhil research, I was interested in the relation between groups and graphs. So let's get started with the group. The course code of the subject is MTH352. In this course, we are basically interested in studying the geometry. And uh, now you may ask, why geometry? Insan ne apne irtika ke awail se hi apne girdo nawa mein geometry aur different shapes ko understand karna, unko observe karna shuru kar diya tha. इस सिलसिले में जो सबसे पहला रिटर्न काम मिलता है वो यूक्लिड का है जिसको हम अक्लीदस के नाम से भी जानते हैं उसने अपने से पहले तमाम मैथमेटिशियन तमाम साइंटिस्ट उनके काम को इकट्ठा करके वॉल्यूम की शेप दी बुक शेप दी उनको आज भी हम यूक्लिड एलिमेंट्स के नाम से जानते हैं और सबसे इंटरेस्टिंग बात यह है कि आज से दो तीन सदी पहले तक इसको एज ए टेक्स्ट बुक पढ़ाया जाता था वो काम जो यूक्लिड ने आज से तेईस चौबीस सदी पहले किया था इन 300 हंड्रेड बी सी टू बी एग्जैक्ट इसीलिए उसकी इस कंट्रीब्यूशन की वजह से उसको हम फादर ऑफ ज्योमेट्री के नाम से भी जानते हैं दूसरा नाम जो हमारे जहन में आता है वो है आर्कमीदीस या जिसको हम अर्शमीदस के नाम से भी जानते हैं उसने अपने गिरदो नवाह में ज्योमेट्री और डिफरेंट शेप्स को ना सिर्फ अंडरस्टैंड किया बल्कि फॉर एग्जांपल उसने सफियर का वॉल्यूम फाइंड आउट किया और उसने मुख्तलिफ वॉल्यूम्स को आपस में उनका रिलेशनशिप भी फाइंड आउट किया एंड ही अंडरस्टूड ज्योमेट्री इन सच ए वे दैट वंस ही सेड दैट गिव मी ए प्लेस टू स्टैंड एंड आई विल मूव द अर्थ नेक्स्ट हमारे पास है मुस्लिम इरा सो वी वी नो दैट मुस्लिम आर ऑलवेज इंटरेस्टेड इन फाइंडिंग द पोजीशन ऑफ द मून जो इस्लामी साल हैं वो पोजीशन ऑफ मून पे डिपेंड कर रहे होते हैं सो दे आर ऑलवेज इंटरेस्टेड इन फाइंडिंग द पोजीशन ऑफ द मून एंड दैट्स व्हाई दे वर्कड दे अंडरस्टूड द ज्योमेट्री ऑफ द सेलेस्टियल ऑब्जेक्ट्स दे अंडरस्टूड द ज्योमेट्री ऑफ द मून एंड दे अंडरस्टूड द ज्योमेट्री ऑफ द सन एंड अदर स्टार्स एंड दिस developed the subject more and then the next major breakthrough in the history of the geometry when rene descartes introduced the cartesian coordinates and it is also said that the same thing was discovered by pierre de fermat so we can just say that these coordinates were invented by both of these mathematicians independently and in fact what he did was given any point in the plane you can associate two numbers or one ordered pair with that number so for example if i have a point in space then i can draw these axes these x axes and y axes in such a way that i can give two numbers so in this case the number is 2 and 5 so this point i can tell the position of this point by these two numbers 2 and 5 similarly if i have some other point for example this point in space then i can tell the position of this point in space by these two numbers which is 7 and 7 so once we know the relationship between this plane and numbers then we can associate geometric objects with equations so for example in this picture this is graph of some equation so in more detail if you have an equation y is equal to x square then you can draw the graph of this equation in other words you can associate a geometrical object to this equation so uh, just a quick reminder how do we do that so you can choose some real numbers let's say in this case 
I choose 0, 1, minus 1, 2, and minus 2. And then we calculate their images under this function, under this equation. And the images are 0, 1, minus 1, 4, and 4. So in other words, the image of 0 is 0, the image of 1 is 1, the image of minus 1 is minus 1, image of 2 is 4, and image of minus 2 is also 4. And next step is to sketch these numbers. So this pair, 0, 0, associated to a point in the plane, and it is this point. Similarly, the next ordered pair is associated to this number on the graph. And minus 1, 1 is associated to this point on the graph. 2, 4 is associated to this point on the graph. And lastly, minus 2, 4 is associated to this number on the graph. And then we join these points in space to get this curve in the plane. On the same lines, we can associate order triple or three numbers to any point in the space in the following way. Now you give three axes, x axis, y axis and z axis. So using these coordinates in three dimensional space, we can associate any point, we can associate any point with three numbers. Similar to the graphs in two-dimensional space, we can associate geometrical objects in three-dimensional space with equations. So for example, some set of equations corresponds to this curve in three-dimensional space. And on the other hand, some equation corresponds to this surface in three-dimensional space. Now, what is the aim of this course? The aim of this course is to review some differential calculus. So, as I said, we are studying geometry using tools from calculus and linear algebra. So, we are going to review some tools from differential calculus in our first discussion. And then we will develop some new tools to study the curves and surfaces in space. And then we will define surfaces mathematically. We will give proper mathematical definition of surfaces. And the next thing will be how to do calculus on surfaces. Now uh, you may ask what does it mean to do calculus on surfaces? So, so for example, we have seen how to sketch graph of an equation in plane. And we have also seen that how to integrate equations in plane. And we also know that how to take derivatives of equations of one variable. So we know how to do calculus in plane. Now what does it mean to do calculus on surfaces? So for example, if I have a curve in plane, it's a planar curve. I can differentiate this curve. I can take integral of this curve. Can I do the same thing for the curve on this bended surface? Is it possible? And the answer to the question is, and the answer to the question is, yes, we can do that. And that is what this course is all about. We will be studying how to do calculus on surfaces. And then at the end, we will be studying a detailed geometry of the surfaces. We will study how to calculate the curvature of the surfaces, how to differentiate two surfaces mathematically. Now, why study surfaces? So as I said, there are many surfaces around us. And we want to study the calculus on surfaces. And what are the major reasons to do this? So for example, our Earth is a surface itself. It's, a, it's not a flat plane. It's a surface. It's a curved surface. And what will happen 
if there is some curve on planet Earth. So I need to know how to integrate this curve. I need to know how to differentiate this curve because it may be some road on the Earth. So I need to find out its value. It may be a road on planet Earth. So I need to study this thing. I need to study the length of this curve. I need to study the bending of this curve. And second most important reason why we studied surfaces is the shape of the space. The shape of the space due to the gravity. So what is this shape? So the idea behind this shape of the space is let's say in the center we have sun and around there there is this planet earth. Now the idea behind this is due to sun it's just like you know you have a sheet and you have some heavy object in the middle so there is a bending in the sheet and the earth moves around the sun due to this bending so it's very simple if you take some object let's say another ball and you throw it in a very fast way then it will keep moving in circles around this and in practical situation it will at the end drop inside but it does not happen with the earth because there is no friction in space so that's why we are interested in surfaces they are all around us and they are the most important objects so the textbook for the course is elementary differential geometry by Barrett O'Neill and the marking scheme is there will be 10% marks for the quizzes 10% for the assignments and 5% for GDB and 25% for sessional 1 and sessional 2 altogether and then the final will be for 50 marks so we will start from some basic definitions let's start from the definition of the set the most fundamental object in mathematics so what is a set it's a collection of objects and these objects are called elements of the set so for example the set of natural numbers 1 2 3 4 up to so on it's a set also set of all integers which are divisible by 2 it's also a set and we know them as set of integers next definition is what is a subset a set A is subset of S provided each element of A is also an element of S so for example if I have a set A which is equal to 1 2 3 then this set is a subset of set of natural numbers and similarly the set we just defined above which is the set of even integers is a subset of integers because every even integer is also an integer the next most important object while we are studying this subject is what is a function a function is basically associating elements from one set to the elements of the second set so for example so properly a function from set D to R is a rule with the help of which each element of D is assigned to a unique element of R so what does these names mean each element of D is assigned to a unique element of R so it means that if for example if I have D is equal to A B C three elements and if R is equal to 1 2 3 4 5 6 then a function from D to R would be which is assigning each element of D so each element of D must have some image D ke har element R ke kisi na kisi element se associated hona chahiye so is case mein the image of A is 1 the image of B is 2 the image of C is 5 so it's an example of a function now on the other hand in this case each element of D is assigned so A is assigned to 1, B is assigned to 2, B is assigned to 3 and C is assigned to 4 but this is not a function because the element B is assigned to 
two different elements and it's not assigned to a unique element of R. So that's what the word means, unique element of R. So each element of D is assigned to a unique element of R. This is right, but this is wrong. This is not an example of a function. The set D, we also call this set as the domain of the function. And the set R is also called the range of the function. So what does image mean? For x belongs to D, f of x is called the image of x under f. And similarly, set of all elements of R, which are images of elements of D, is called the image set of the function. So for example, if I have a function f from R to R, which is defined as f of x is equal to 1 plus x, then the image of f in this case is R. So why the image of f is equal to R? Because corresponding to every element of this range R, there exists an element such that the image of that element under F is equal to R. So that's why the image of F is equal to R. Next we have how to take composition of two functions. So if I have a function F from set D to set R and if I have another function G from set E to set S, then we can compose these two functions. Lekin, hum har do functions ko compose nahi kar sakte. Is mein ye jo condition hai, g of e must be contained in d, ye satisfy honi chahiye. Ye condition hum kyun require kar rahe hain? by the definition of composition of two functions, f of f circle g, ye condition hum kyun require kar rahe Because by definition of composition of two function f circle g is equal to f of g of x so basically we are applying f on the image values of g so the image values must be contained in the domain of d because functional value aap tabhi find out kar sakte hain agar wo value uski domain mein hogi agar g of x f ki domain mein hoga tabhi aap ye composition calculate kar sakte hain for example, agar aapke paas uh, function f of x hai, 1 plus x, and you have another function g of x is equal to x square, then their composition f circle g is given as f of g of x. Now what is g of x? g of x is equal to x square. So this becomes f of x square. Or what is f of x square? Ye bilkul aise hai. Agar f of x is equal to 1 plus x hai, to aap is x ko replace kar dein, x square ke saath. So this is equal to 1 plus x square. So this is composition of the function f and g. Now next we define what are one-to-one -one functions and the next we define what is a one-to-one -one function. A function f from d to r is called a one-to-one -one function if f of x equals f of y implies x is equal to y. For example, if you have a function from set a to set b where set a is equal to 1, 2, 3, 4 and set b equals a, b, c, d then one example of a one-to-one -one function from set A to set B is given as is me ek ka jo image B hai, two ka image C hai, three ka image A hai, or four ka image D hai. Ye one-to-one -one function hai kyunke B ka har element A ke sirf ek element ka image hai. On the other hand, agar aapke paas kuch aasa function hai jis mein a is mapping to B, 2 is mapping to D, 3 is mapping to A, and 4 is mapping to D. It is not a one-to-one -one function. Ye kyun one-to-one -one function nahi hai? Kyunke isme jo element D hai, ye do elements ka image hai, 2 and 4. Is wajah se, this is not an one-to-one -one function. Another example is f of x equals 1 plus x. It is a one-to-one -one function kyunke if f of x equals f of y which implies 1 plus x equals 1 plus y this may have 1 dono side se cancel kar de. so this implies x is equal to y so f of x equals f of y implies x is equal to y is ka yeh matlab hai f of x equals 1 plus x is a 1 to 1 function
Now what is an onto function? A function f from a to b is called an onto function if f of a is equal to b, which means जो image values हैं f की वो तमाम की तमाम set b के बराबर हैं. In other words, b का हर element a के किसी ना किसी element का image है under f. So for example in this case, if f is a function from a to b and the set a is one two three four and the set b is a b c d. इस केस में अगर हम इन एलिमेंट्स को इस तरीके से एसोसिएट करें कि एक का इमेज बी है टू का डी है थ्री का ए है और फोर का सी है इसमें देखें कि बी का हर एलिमेंट बी का हर एलिमेंट ए के किसी ना किसी एलिमेंट का इमेज है ए इज एन इमेज ऑफ थ्री बी इज एन इमेज ऑफ वन सी इज एन इमेज ऑफ फोर एंड डी इज एन इमेज ऑफ टू सो एवरी एलिमेंट ऑफ बी इज एन इमेज ऑफ सम एलिमेंट ऑफ ए so it is an on to function the range of the function is equal to image of the function for any function we can define inverse of a function but we can't do it for every function if a function is one to one and on to then the inverse of f exist what is inverse ko hum denote karte hain f उसकी पावर में माइनस वन एफ इनवर्स एंड इट्स अ फंक्शन ऑब्वियसली फ्रॉम आर टू डी और इसको डिफाइन कैसे करते हैं ए फंक्शन एफ इनवर्स फ्रॉम आर टू डी इज डिफाइंड एज वाई गोइंग टू एक्स वेयर वाई इज इक्वल टू एफ ऑफ एक्स एंड दिस फंक्शन इज वेल डिफाइंड बिकॉज द फंक्शन एफ इज ऑन टू फंक्शन so every element of r every element of r has some image kyunki r ka har element f ke kisi na kisi element ka image hai since it's an on to function so this means every element of r has a value under this map f inverse and it's a unique value because it is one to one function in other words we can also define inverse of a function in the following way g is inverse of f if f circle g equals g circle f is equal to identity element agar ek aisa function exist kare g such that its composition with f from both sides is identity so for example if i have a function 1 plus x and if i have a function x minus 1 then g is basically inverse of f so we can see how so what is f circle g of x so this is equal to f of g of x now what is g of x g of x is equal to x minus 1 and this is equal to 1 plus x minus 1 which is equal to x which is an identity function similarly we can see that g circle f is also identity so g is inverse of f we can also say that f is inverse of g and in general we can say that they are inverses of each other next hamare paas hai definition of euclidean space a euclidean space is basically set of all ordered triples of real numbers such a triple is called point of r3 or point of the euclidean space so for example in this picture this point p is basically an ordered triple and this is in fact a point in the space aur humne dekha tha abhi definition of cartesian coordinates mein ki humne space mein kisi bhi point ko एसोसिएट कर दिया एक ऑर्डर ट्रिपल से तीन नंबरों से सो so, इस केस में ये जो पॉइंट है इसको हमने एसोसिएट कर दिया तीन नंबरों से टू टू एंड टू सिमिलरली वी कैन डू इट फॉर एनी पॉइंट इन द स्पेस वी कैन डू इट फॉर एनी पॉइंट इन द स्पेस टेक एनी पॉइंट इन द स्पेस दे विल बी एन ऑर्डर ट्रिपल एसोसिएटेड टू दैट पॉइंट और कलेक्शन ऑफ सच पॉइंट इज कॉल्ड यूक्लिडियन स्पेस सो बेसिकली आप ये कर रहे हैं आप जितनी भी स्पेस में जितने भी आपके पॉइंट्स हैं उन पॉइंट्स को आपने 
ان کے جو آرڈر ٹرپلز ہیں ان کو ایک سیٹ میں رائٹ ڈاؤن کر دیا اور اس سیٹ کو آپ یہ کہہ رہے ہیں کہ یہ یوکلیڈین تھری سپیس ہے نو وٹ آر دی پراپرٹیز آف یوکلیڈین سپیس اگر میرے پاس کوئی سے دو پوائنٹ ہیں پی اینڈ کیو آئی کین ایڈ دیز ٹو پوائنٹ پی پلس کیو جسٹ فرسٹ کوارڈینیٹ کو فرسٹ کوارڈینیٹ میں ایڈ کر دیں سیکنڈ کو سیکنڈ میں اور تھرڈ کو تھرڈ میں ایڈ کر دیں اور آپ کے پاس آ جائے گا ایڈیشن آف دا ٹو پوائنٹس ان دا یوکلیڈین اسپیس سو ریمبر یوکلیڈین اسپیس کیا ہے اٹس اے کولیکشن آف آرڈر ٹرپلز سملرلی اگر میرے پاس کوئی سا پوائنٹ پی ہے اور کوئی سا اسکیلر ہے الفا سو اسکیلر مطلب کوئی سا ریئل نمبر ہے وی کین ملٹی پلائی اسکیلر ود دس پوائنٹ اور اس کے جو کورسپونڈنگ کمپوننٹس ہیں اس سے ملٹی پلائی کر دیں الفا کو اینڈ وی ول گیٹ اسکیلر ملٹی پل آف اے پوائنٹ دا پوائنٹ دیر از اے اسپیشل پوائنٹ اوریجن اس کے کوارڈینیٹس کیا ہیں زیرو 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 ان جنرل ان جنرل آر تھری از اے ویکٹر اسپیس دس کولیکشن آف آرڈر ٹرپلز وچ کورسپونڈس ٹو the points in the space this collection is a vector space now what is a vector space so before doing the definition of vector space we need to know what is a field so uh, before doing the definition of vector space we need to know what is a field so a field is a set with two operations defined on it and uh, these two operation must satisfy certain properties اس میں جو سب سے پہلی پراپرٹی ہے وہ یہ ہے کہ اگر میں کوئی سے دو ایلیمنٹس لوں فیلڈ کے ان کو میں ایڈ کروں تو میرے پاس اگین ایف کا ایلیمنٹ آنا چاہیے سملرلی اگر میں ان دونوں کو ملٹی پلائی کروں تو میرے پاس ونس اگین ایک ایلیمنٹ ایف کا آنا چاہیے دا سیکنڈ پراپرٹی جو یہ سیٹسفائی کرنا چاہیے وہ یہ ہے کہ اگر میں الفا پلس بیٹا پلس گیما کروں اس میں بیٹا پلس گیما کو پہلے ایڈ کروں اور پھر اس کو بعد میں الفا میں ایڈ کروں یا میں پہلے الفا پلس بیٹا ایڈ کروں اور بعد میں گیما ایڈ کروں اٹ ڈز ناٹ میک اینی ڈفرینس نا واٹ از دا یوز آف دس پراپرٹی اس کا یہ مطلب ہے اگر میں یہ لکھوں الفا پلس بیٹا پلس گیما تو اس کا مطلب ہے مجھے یہ فکر کرنے کی ضرورت نہیں ہے کہ میں پہلے الفا پلس بیٹا کو ایڈ کروں یا بیٹا پلس گیما کو ایڈ کروں کوئی سا بھی میں آپریشن پہلے کر لوں آنسر میں کوئی ڈفرنس نہیں ہوگا یہ چیز اس چیز کو میک شور کر رہی ہے یہ پراپرٹی اسی طریقے سے میں اسی طریقے سے میں الفا پلس بیٹا پلس گیما پلس ڈیلٹا اپ ٹو سو ون ان تمام نمبرز کو لکھ سکتا ہوں ود آؤٹ بریکٹس تو میں بریکٹس کو اوائڈ کر سکتا ہوں یوزنگ دس پراپرٹی سملرلی یہ پراپرٹی سیٹسفائی ہونی چاہیے فار دا سیکنڈ آپریشن وچ از ملٹیپلیکیشن اور دا سیم کانسیکوینسز اس کیس میں بھی اگر یہ پراپرٹی سیٹسفائی ہو جائے تو ہم بریکٹس کے بغیر نمبر لکھ سکتے ہیں میں الفا بیٹا گیما کو ایسے لکھ سکتا ہوں اور اس میں مجھے اس چیز کی فکر کرنے کی ضرورت نہیں ہے کہ میں پہلے الفا اور بیٹا کو ملٹی پلائی کروں یا پہلے میں بیٹا اور گیما کو ملٹی پلائی کروں دا نیکسٹ پراپرٹی دیٹ دس سیٹ مسٹ سیٹسفائی ان آرڈر ٹو بی اے فیلڈ از ایگزٹینس آف ایڈیٹو اینڈ ملٹیپلیکیٹو آئیڈینٹی سو وٹ از ایڈیٹو آئیڈینٹی ایک نمبر زیرو سچ دیٹ کہ میں اس میں فیلڈ کا کوئی سا بھی ایلیمنٹ ایڈ کروں کسی بھی طریقے سے الفا پلس زیرو کروں یا زیرو پلس الفا کروں آنسر میرے پاس ہمیشہ سیم آئے گا اور میرے پاس ملٹیپلیکیٹو آئیڈینٹی ہونی چاہیے سچ دیٹ اگر میں کسی بھی نمبر کو اس سے ملٹی پلائی کروں تو میرے پاس آنسر الفا آنا چاہیے نیکسٹ پراپرٹی ہمارے پاس ایڈیٹو انورس اور ملٹیپلیکیٹو انورس ایگزٹ کرنے چاہیے سو وٹ از ایڈیٹو انورس اگر الفا کوئی سا ایلیمنٹ ہے تو مائنس الفا از دی ایڈیٹو انورس سچ دیٹ اگر میں مائنس الفا کو الفا میں ایڈ کروں یا مائنس الفا کو الفا میں دوسری سائڈ سے ایڈ کروں تو میرے پاس آنسر ہمیشہ زیرو آئے گا سملرلی فار اینی نان زیرو ایلیمنٹ دس از امپورٹنٹ دس از امپورٹنٹ فار اینی نان زیرو ایلیمنٹ 
एक ऐसा एलिमेंट एग्जिस्ट करना चाहिए जिसको हम अल्फा रेस्ट पावर माइनस वन से डिनोट करते हैं और अल्फा इंटू अल्फा माइनस वन इनका मल्टीप्लिकेशन मेरे पास आइडेंटिटी आनी चाहिए एंड द लास्ट प्रॉपर्टी इन दोनों ऑपरेशंस को इन दोनों ऑपरेशंस को हम आपस में रिलेट कर रहे हैं ये आपके पास मल्टीप्लिकेशन है और ये आपके पास एडिशन है और ये आपस में इंटरेक्ट कैसे करते हैं सो अल्फा इंटू बीटा प्लस गैमा इज इक्वल टू अल्फा इंटू बीटा प्लस अल्फा इंटू गैमा सो द मल्टीप्लिकेशन इज डिस्ट्रीब्यूटिव ओवर एडिशन सो अगर ये तमाम प्रॉपर्टीज अगर कोई स्ट्रक्चर सेटिस्फाई कर दे तो हम उसको कहते हैं इट्स ए फील्ड ना हमें बहुत सी एग्जाम्पल्स ऑलरेडी पता है फील्ड की फॉर एग्जाम्पल नाउ हमें बहुत सी एग्जाम्पल्स ऑलरेडी पता है फील्ड की फॉर एग्जाम्पल सेट ऑफ रियल नंबर इज ए फील्ड सो वाई दिस इज ए फील्ड क्योंकि इसमें एडिशन है और मल्टीप्लीकेशन है एंड दिस एडिशन एंड मल्टीप्लीकेशन दिस सेट इज ए फील्ड क्योंकि इसमें कोई से दो एलिमेंट्स में अगर एड करूं तो मेरे पास एलिमेंट हमेशा रियल नंबर आएगा For example, if I do one plus two, then I always get a number three, which is a real number again. कोई से दो और real number ले लूँ, three plus two, that's five, which is again a real number. So set of real number is closed under addition. Similarly, अगर मैं कोई से तीन number लूँ, then a plus b plus c is the same as a plus b plus c. और इसकी एग्जाम्पल है अगर मैं वन प्लस टू प्लस थ्री करूं इट्स द सेम एज वन प्लस टू एंड प्लस थ्री वन प्लस टू प्लस थ्री पहले कर रहे हैं हम विच इज़ फाइव इज इक्वल टू थ्री प्लस थ्री इसमें वन प्लस टू को पहले कर रहे हैं विच इज़ इक्वल टू सिक्स इक्वल सिक्स सो एसोसिएटिविटी इन जनरल होल्ड कर रही है सेट ऑफ रियल नंबर में दिस इज जस्ट एन एग्जाम्पल We know that in general numbers satisfy the associativity. The next property is the next property is commutativity. हमें ये भी पता है अगर मैं कोई से दो नंबर को ऐड करूँ तो उसमें ऑर्डर मैटर नहीं करता फॉर एग्जाम्पल टू प्लस थ्री इज इक्वल टू थ्री प्लस टू कोई से दो रियल नंबर को मैं ऐड करना चाहूँ तो उसमें ऑर्डर मैटर नहीं करता एंड द नेक्स्ट प्रॉपर्टी इज वी मस्ट हैव एडिटिव आइडेंटिटी सो इसमें जीरो एग्जिस्ट करता है जीरो बिलोंग्स टू आर सच दैट जीरो प्लस ए इज इक्वल टू ए प्लस जीरो इज इक्वल टू ए और ये हमें पता है किसी भी नंबर में मैं जीरो ऐड करूँ तो मेरे पास वही नंबर आएगा नेक्स्ट हमारे पास है इफ ए इज एनी रियल नंबर then minus a belongs to r such that a plus minus a is equal to minus a plus a is equal to zero for example agar main 2 le lu then there exist minus 2 such that 2 plus minus 2 is equal to zero so set of real number satisfied these five properties फॉर एडिशन लेकिन अगर आपको डेफिनेशन याद हो तो आपने वो तमाम की तमाम प्रॉपर्टीज मल्टीप्लीकेशन के लिए भी प्रूव करनी है सो लेट सी सो लेट सी वी हैव आर अंडर एडिशन एंड मल्टीप्लीकेशन अगर ये सेटिस्फाई करेगा फॉर मल्टीप्लीकेशन द सेम प्रॉपर्टीज देन इट विल बी ए फील्ड सो सबसे पहली प्रॉपर्टी अगर मैं कोई से दो रियल नंबर को मल्टीप्लाई करूं तो मेरे पास हमेशा एक रियल नंबर आएगा फॉर एग्जांपल टू इंटू थ्री इज इक्वल टू सिक्स विच इज अगेन ए रियल नंबर सिमिलरली थ्री इंटू फाइव इज फिफ्टीन विच इज अगेन ए रियल नंबर सो द मल्टीप्लीकेशन इज क्लोज अंडर मल्टीप्लीकेशन सो आर इज क्लोज अंडर मल्टीप्लीकेशन द नेक्स्ट प्रॉपर्टी इज असोसिएटिविटी कोई से भी तीन रियल नंबर को मैं मल्टीप्लाई करना चाहूँ then I can do it in any order I want. 
Similarly, let's see an example. 2 into 3 into 5 is the same as 2 into 3 into 5. And this holds for each and every triplet of real numbers. The next property is a into b must be equal to b into a. And we know that this is also true because 2 into 3 is always equal to 2 into 3 and up to so on. We can do that. We can in fact see that this holds for each and every pair a and b of real numbers. And the next property is identity element. There exists one belongs to R such that 1 into A is equal to A, which is 1 A into 1. So for example, 2 into 1 is 2. And the last property is for any A belongs to R. But if you remember, we had a condition imposed on A. A must not be equal to 0. There exists 1 over A belonging to R such that a into 1 over a is equal to 1. So for example, if you have a real number 3, hai, then there exists 1 over 3 such that 3 into 1 over 3 is equal to identity. And last property you have required ki thi for a set to be a field is it must satisfy the distributive laws. a plus b plus c must be equal to a into b plus a into c. And we can see that this holds trivially for a set of real numbers. If I take three real numbers, 2 plus 3 into 4 is the equal to 4 plus 3 into 3. So, this is how we know that a set of real numbers is a field. Similarly, we can do other examples as well. So set Z5 is a field. So this is modulo classes of integers when we divide it by 5. And once we know the definition of the field, we can define what is a vector space. A vector space over a field F is a set satisfying certain conditions. It must be closed under addition and scalar multiplication, which means if I have two elements vector space, ke hain, unki addition V. Mein honi and similarly, if I have a scalar alpha and a vector V, then alpha into V must be in vector space. Similarly, if alpha is a scalar and V is an element of the set capital V, then their multiplication must also be an element of V. Next, we pass the property of associativity of addition. If I have three elements set V, ke le lu, then they must satisfy this property. And we have seen what is this property. Ki kya importance hai. Is we have brackets ki zarurat nahi padegi. Jab bhi maine numbers ko add karna hoga, mujhe brackets ki zarurat nahi padegi. Next, this addition on the set P must be commutative. V plus U must be equal to U plus V. And the next is existence of identity element with respect to addition. And the next is existence of identity element with respect to addition. So we have uh, 0 belongs to V such that V plus 0 is equal to 0 plus V is equal to V. So this condition will satisfy honi chahiye agar aap is set V ko vector space banana ja rahe. And next is humare paas inverse elements with respect to addition. Agar koi sabhi mere paas element V hai then there must exist an element minus V such that V plus minus V is equal to minus V plus V is equal to 0. And the next property is related to scalar multiplication or addition. Ko. Scalar multiplication or addition will be related to this. If I take a scalar element, le lu, element of the field alpha, le lu, or u or v element of the set v, le lu, then alpha into u plus v must be equal to alpha into u plus alpha into v. 
and similarly it must also be distributed from the other side on the set of fields so agar mere paas koi se do elements hai alpha aur beta of the field then alpha plus beta into v must be equal to alpha into v plus beta into v next hamare paas hai compatibility of scalar multiplication with field multiplication so which means alpha into beta into v must be equal to alpha into beta and then into v and last jo property is set ko satisfy karni chahiye taki ye vector space ban jaye wo ye hai 1 into v must be equal to v now this 1 is basically the multiplicative identity of the field and this v is basically any vector of the set v so if all of these conditions are satisfied then we can say that v is a vector space and i'm sure we have seen many examples of the vector space so for example if i take v is equal to r2 then it is a vector space so we know that what is r2 r2 is basically is a set of ordered pairs such that x and y belongs to set of real numbers now in this set how do we define addition so if i take any two elements p and q belonging to r2 such that p is equal to x1 x2 and q is equal to y1 y2 then we define p plus q is equal to x1 plus y1 x2 plus y2 and under this addition and scalar multiplication so for any alpha in set of real numbers alpha into p is defined as alpha x1 alpha x2 so under this addition and scalar multiplication we can easily see that this set r2 this set r2 is a vector space and similarly we can find many examples of vector spaces we can prove that r3 is a vector space up to so on and in general we can see that rn the euclidean space of dimension n is a vector space now in euclidean space i can define three real valued functions x y and z such that for any element p of the euclidean space r3 x of p is equal to p1 y of p is equal to p2 and z of p is equal to p3 jo function x hai agar kisi bhi point pe aap apply kare to uska x coordinate dega agar kisi bhi element pe y apply kare to uska y coordinate aayega aur kisi bhi element p pe z apply kare to aapke paas uska z coordinate aayega so it's a real valued function iski jo values aa rahi hain ye real numbers hain p1 p2 p3 are real numbers so we can also use the following notation agar main x1 se denote karu function x ko x2 se denote karu function y ko aur x3 se denote karu function z ko then any point p can be written as any point p which is p1 p2 p3 can be written as x1 of p x2 of p and x3 of p because x1 of p is equal to p1 x2 of p is equal to p2 x3 of p is equal to p3 and the next definition is so as i said earlier ki hum differential calculus ko review kar rahe honge kyunki humne in tools ko aage ja ke use karna to study the geometry to study the geometry of surfaces to study geometry of curves to study geometry in general to sabse pehli jo definition hai differential calculus ki jiski hame zarurat padegi wo hai differentiable function or c infinity function or smooth function or infinitely differentiable function so these are all names of the same function so these are all names of the same property so a function is differentiable provided all partial derivatives of f of all orders exist and are continuous 
so what does this mean agar mere paas koi sa bhi function f f from r to to r defined in the following way f of x y is equal to x square y then this is a differentiable function and how can we prove that so let's calculate partial f by partial x so we know that what is partial derivative of f with respect to x it's the derivative of f with respect to x by taking or by keeping the variable y constant hum is variable y ko bilkul aise treat kar rahe honge jaise ye ek constant hai so what is partial f by partial x then humne x ka derivative lena so it is 2x aur jo y hai wo constant ki tarah iske sath aa jayega aur agar koi confusion aa rahi hai to main one variable ka case le leta hu y is equal to 2x square what is dy by dx isme 2 is a constant to aap is 2 ko waise hi likh denge aur x square ka derivative aap 2x likhenge so yahi aapne yahan kiya by keeping y constant similarly partial f by partial y which is equal to x square aur is case mein aapne kya kiya x ko as a constant treat kiya और विद रिस्पेक्ट टू वाई आपने डेरिवेटिव लिया और डेरिवेटिव ऑफ वाई विद रिस्पेक्ट टू वाई इज वन और ये इसके साथ आ गया सिमिलरली व्हाट इज पार्शियल एफ बाय पार्शियल एक्स स्क्वायर इट इज इक्वल टू टू वाई व्हाट इज पार्शियल एफ बाय पार्शियल वाई स्क्वायर इट्स इक्वल टू जीरो एंड वट इज पार्शियल एफ बाय पार्शियल एक्स पार्शियल वाई this is equal to in fact partial by partial x of partial f by partial y which is equal to partial by partial x of partial by partial f by partial y is x square so this is equal to 2x and we can see that partial f by partial x is a polynomial in two variables aur polynomials hame pata hai ye tamam ke tamam hamesha continuous hote hain पार्शल एफ बाई पार्शल वाई एक पोलिनोमियल है वंस अगेन और ये भी कॉन्टीन्यूस होगा पार्शल एफ बाई पार्शल एक्स स्क्वेयर इज इक्वल टू टू वाई एन अदर पोलिनोमियल सो कॉन्टीन्यूस पार्शल एफ बाई पार्शल वाई स्क्वेयर जीरो ऑलवेज कॉन्टीन्यूस पार्शल स्क्वेयर एफ बाई पार्शल एक्स पार्शल वाई इज इक्वल टू टू एक्स ऑलवेज कॉन्टीन्यूस एंड सिमिलरली वी कैन सी ऑल ऑफ द पार्शल डेरिवेटिव ऑफ दिस फंक्शन आर कॉन्टीन्यूस इसलिए हम कहते हैं कि ये जो फंक्शन है इस केस में एफ बिलोंग्स टू सी इंफिनिटी इट्स अ स्मूथ फंक्शन सो दिस फंक्शन एफ फ्रॉम आर टू टू आर डिफाइंड एज एफ इज इक्वल टू एक्स स्क्वेयर वाई इज ए स्मूथ फंक्शन इज ए सी इंफिनिटी फंक्शन इट्स इंफिनिटली डिफ्रेंशियबल फंक्शन और डिफ्रेंशियबल फंक्शन अगर मेरे पास कोई से भी दो रियल वैल्यूड फंक्शन है देन आई कैन एड दम सो हाउ डू वी एड दम अगर कोई सा फंक्शन f है और g है किसी भी पॉइंट p पे देन f प्लस जी ऑफ p इज इक्वल टू एफ ऑफ p प्लस जी ऑफ p सिमिलरली आई कैन मल्टीप्लाई द टू फंक्शन एज वेल f ऑफ p g ऑफ p सो फॉर एग्जांपल अगर मेरे पास फंक्शन f इज इक्वल टू एक्स स्क्वायर वाई है और g इज इक्वल टू एफ वाई साइन z है देन वी कैन फाइंड f इंटू जी स्क्वायर सो f इंटू जी स्क्वायर of a point x y z is equal to f of x y z and multiplied by g of x y z into g of x y z so what is f of x y z it is x square y what is g of x y z it is y sin z and what is g of x y z again y sin z aur agar inko aapas mein multiply hum kar le x y cube sin square z it's the multiplication it's f into g square so that's how we multiply two functions before going to the next question we need to know what is a chain rule now if i have a function g which is differentiable and if i have another function f which is differentiable at g of x 
then the composition of the two function is differentiable at x moreover if y is equal to f of g of x is equal to moreover if y is equal to f of g of x and u is equal to g of x then dy by dx is equal to dy by du into du by dx in other words y is a function of g of x and g of x is a function of x so y indirectly is a function of x so we should be able to calculate the rate of change of y with respect to x because y is depending on x so what is dy by dx by using this rule we can calculate that dy by dx is equal to dy by du so rate of change of y with respect to u and multiplied by rate of change of u with respect to x so for example if you have a function y is equal to cosine x cube so first we can write down this function as a composition of two function so for example if I take u is equal to x cube and y is equal to cosine u then y is composition of these two functions so what is dy by du is equal to minus sine u and what is du by dx is equal to 3x square so we can easily calculate what is dy by dx which is equal to dy by du which is minus sine u and du by dx is 3x square so this is equal to minus 3x square sine x cube so that's how we can apply a chain rule to calculate derivatives of complicated functions now we have the next question if f is equal to x square y then what is partial by partial y of sin f so let's try to find out what is partial by partial y of sin f so we are going to use the chain rule or I will not go into detail I will show you the shortcut that we have seen this is the one I will apply this thing in this case derivative of f by taking g of x as a variable and the derivative of g of x whatever is inside is may f ka derivative lenge or g of x ko as it is lick thing or per g of x ka derivative lenge is ko hum outside inside rule be kaya sakte so so f of g of x likha hua so sab se pehle up outside function ka derivative lhe f of g of x f prime of g of x or phir inside jo function hai uska derivative lhe which is g prime of x so let's try to apply this rule outside inside rule so partial by partial y of sin x square y ہم نے ڈیریویٹیو لینا ہے سائن آف ایک سکوئر وائے کا with respect to y اور یہ کوئی عام ڈیریویٹیو نہیں ہے it's a partial ڈیریویٹیو اور جیسا کہ میں نے پہلے کہا تھا if we are taking derivative of a function with respect to a variable and if it's a partial ڈیریویٹیو تو اس میں جتنے بھی تمام constants تو اس میں جتنے بھی باقی ویریبلز ہیں ان کو آپ ایسے constant treat کریں گے so for example اس میں x کو آپ ایسے constant treat کریں گے so what is derivative of sin function so whatever is inside یہ ہم اس کو ویسے لکھ دیں گے so derivative of sin is cosine اور اس کے اندر جو بھی angle کی جگہ expression لکھا ہوا وہ ہم نے ویسے لکھ دیا that's the derivative of outside function similarly what is the derivative of inside function now inside function is x square y and what is the partial derivative of x square y so cosine x square y partial by partial y of x square y once again x square is a constant and y is a variable so the derivative is x square so that's how we calculate the partial derivatives of complicated functions using chain rule so that was the end of our lecture اس لیکچر میں ہم نے کیا کیا ہم نے یہ دیکھا کہ ہم جیومیٹری کو کیوں سٹڈی کرنا چاہتے ہیں why this is important to study geometry ہم نے اردگرد میں اگزیمپلز دیکھیں 
ہمارے ارد گرد بہت سی اگزامپلز ہیں جس میں ہم جیومیٹری کو یوز کرتے ہیں ان کو اسٹڈی کرنے کے لیے ہم اپنی پلانٹ ارتھ کو اسٹڈی کرتے ہیں اس کی جیومیٹری کو انڈرسٹینڈ کرتے ہیں یوزنگ دس سبجیکٹ آف جیومیٹری ہم نے دیکھا کہ گریوٹی ایون اس میں بھی سرفسز انوالو ہیں اس کے بعد ہم نے ہسٹری کے بارے میں دیکھا کہ کس میتھمیٹیشن نے کس سائنٹسٹ نے اور کس دور میں ان کے اوپر کام ہوا اس کے بعد ہم نے کورس آؤٹ لائن دیکھنے کے بعد یہ دیکھا کہ ہم نے ڈفرینشیل کیلکولس یا ڈیریویٹوز یوز کرنے تو ہم نے اس کے لیے کچھ ڈیفینیشنز کی اور کچھ کوشچنس کی اگلے لیکچر میں ہم ڈفرینشیل کیلکولس کو آگے کنٹینیو کریں گے اور اس میں جو اور زیادہ ٹولز ہیں جو اور زیادہ ڈیفینیشنز ہیں ان کو ریوائز کریں گے تاکہ ہم آگے جو میٹری کو انڈرسٹینڈ کرنے میں ان کو یوز کر سکیں